Democratic presidential candidates are slamming the president for his approach to Iran. Here's what some of them had to say after Iran's attack Tuesday night. The situation is still unfolding, but in any crisis, it's imperative that the commander in chief think through all the implications of his actions or her actions uh, with the help of her or his top advisors and not act uh, uh, rashly or recklessly. And I certainly hope the president does that. Uh, but unfortunately, as we all know, that's just not in his nature. But this is a reminder why we need to de-escalate tension in the Middle East. The American people do not want a war with Iran. This isn't about, well, Trump took out a bad guy. We should not have a commander-in-chief who makes decisions based on emotion or revenge. We need a commander-in-chief who is making decisions about what is in the best interest of our national security as a country. What is in the best interest of the safety and security of the American people? I want to bring in CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns. All right, Caitlin, so in the wake of what we have seen unfold in the Middle East with Iran, have any of the candidates changed their take on the situation? Well, we've seen the candidates really united around two things, which is first, they don't want to go to war. Uh, and second, that they are really critiquing, criticizing the president's judgment calls, his overall strategy, and questioning what the strategy is. But you do see a little bit of a divide. Uh, last night, Joe Biden, for example, released a statement saying, as, as news of the missile strike came, let's wait and see what the facts are, but here are my thoughts going to the troops. Um, you have seen, I was at Elizabeth Warren's event last night in Brooklyn. This was an event designed to really kind of help her regain some momentum in this race. A huge crowd, really excited for her. And she had to start it off by saying, look, this is a sober moment right now. Um, then you have Bernie Sanders, who's been going after Joe Biden, especially on the Iraq war, and saying, you know, still arguing for uh, drawing down or de-escalation. De uh, and so does today, um, it was interesting today, Booker, Cory Booker and Elizabeth Warren were in a briefing today um, with the leaders from the Trump administration on this. We'll see what they have to say. Cory Booker released a, a tweet saying that he was uh, not convinced that the uh, threats were imminent. Uh, there is a large takeaway from the Democrats right now uh, wondering, you know, why they they did this at this point. But it does remain to be seen whether this will be a real issue that's going to be shaping how voters are assessing these candidates. You can argue on one hand that it could uh, kind of help them to make the case that they are best equipped to be commander in chief and kind of draw that contrast with Trump and especially talk about uh, his judgment and his what they call a rash style, uh, it could also raise some vulnerabilities for him, them as well. So you mentioned Joe Biden a moment ago. Some of the candidates are now attacking him for his vote on the Iraq war. How is his campaign responding uh, to that? And could this really affect his campaign? Yeah, well, Joe Biden flew to New York yesterday to give a foreign policy speech, and he uh, made it so that it looked very presidential. He had flags in the background. Uh, there were reporters there. Um, but it was, as you can see on your screen, uh, meant to look like he was in command. And this is something that uh, the campaign really wants to focus on. Uh, focusing on Joe Biden's experience, not only as a vice president under Obama, but also um, his work in the Senate chairing the Foreign Relations Committee. And it was an effort to show that he is the one that can kind of restore uh, some calm and control. Um, but there is going to be uh, this vulnerability for him in the Iraq war vote. He's the only candidate in this race who voted for it. He and Bernie Sanders were the only ones uh, in the Senate at that time, and Biden is the only one that voted for it. So this could be uh, a tricky position for him if voters still are holding uh, him to account on this and if it still is something that's weighing on their minds. Certainly it is among Bernie Sanders supporters. Let's turn to the Trump campaign. So that campaign has been touting Soleimani's death and they've purchased ads on Facebook with that messaging saying that he's no longer a threat to the United States. How are campaign officials trying to use this to their advantage? Oh, certainly. They've been trying to um, say exactly what you just said, but also try to point the finger back at Democrats 
Democrats and kind of go after them for not being um, on board with this. And it really remains to be seen what the fallout is. So if you're going off of today, um, it, it appears at least at this moment that uh, that there might not be anything further, but there is this big question of, of who knows. So on one hand, it could put Democrats in a bind going after uh, the president on this if things turn out to be relatively okay. Mm -hmm. Democrats, though, argue that this is something that the president created himself and uh, shouldn't get credit if, if uh, things, in fact, do de-escalate. Yeah, I mean, how are Democrats sort of looking at this potentially uh, with the Trump campaign touting this? Do they appear to be concerned about the campaign's messaging on Yeah, this. I was talking to a Democratic strategist today who said that caution is kind of the best policy at this point. You don't want to get over your skis, really, uh, and going too uh, far after anything mm -hmm. at this point. So uh, taking into account what the facts are, you kind of saw that in Joe Biden's speech yesterday while he said, you know, talked about things that he believed President Trump should do moving forward, what he would do as president. Um, so there is this risk, especially if the Trump campaign, again, who knows what's going to happen, but if things remain as as they are, uh, you could see the Trump campaign, you know, talking about the way in which this is a president who took out terrorists and kind of, um, you know, kind of focused on that. It could present some risks, but Democrats are saying, look, we still need to wait and see uh, what unfolds. And, you know, when you talk to voters or when you're, what you're hearing from voters is that, you know, the Middle East weighs heavily on their minds. This is something that is very personal for a lot of people, especially if you have family members who are uh, serving abroad. A lot of these voters in Iowa, uh, especially a place like South Carolina and New Hampshire as well. All right. Caitlin Huey Burns for us. Caitlin, thank you very much. Thank you.